Welcome everybody to Command Combat Battle Reports, and today we have Steel Division. This is a World War II game where you fight each other during the attacks on Normandy, uh, and you take either the Allied side or the German side. And as you can see here, the Allies are on the right, the Germans are on the left. This is a four-on-four -four battle, uh, and this is one where you can uh, build your own uh, armies or military groups or whatever. Uh, and, uh, anyway, I guess battalion size approximately. Uh, so let's take a look at their groups. There, like I said, there are going to be four of them on each side. Uh, on the, um, on the allied left, it's of course our right as we're looking, you can see the forces here. The camera work is a little bit difficult on this particular one, but you can see that they are led by a Honey Stewart, and they've got actually kind of a mixture here of some trucks and a uh, one of the carriers. Um, anyway, and then you know, backed up at the end by uh, one of those universal carriers. Uh, that's one of the British things. Anyway, uh, then over here you got a, the largest group led by another Honey Stewart, um, and you got a Lloyd carrier which is dragging a uh, an anti tank gun. You got some uh, carry or some trucks here with some troops in them. Uh, they're very much just uh, some stewards uh, mixed in with the troops and the various equipment that they're going to take just in case they get attacked. It uh, looks like they have a few anti-tank guns, so watch for anti-tank stuff being right there. Uh, hopefully for, them, uh, for their sake they're going to be up against armor or they're going to be surprised by a lot of infantry running over them. Uh, okay, over here you have on two different roads, uh, again the cameraman is drunk, uh, you have uh, led by a, it looks, oh, it looks like uh, scouts up there in the jeep, in uh, two of them, and then of course uh, the infantry with some of their support in there, and again some uh, anti-tank guns. You can see with the little icon there shows that it's anti-tank guns, there it's machine guns, so they're, you know, have a lot of support in this one. So like while this one is a mixture of a lot of infantry and anti-tank guns, this one is a lot of just mostly support things with a little bit of infantry in there. Uh, over here you got the smallest one of them. A uh, lot of scouts in there, but you do have a couple of stewards. So this one's more of the scout unit. Uh, and over here is, it looks like it's a bit of infantry. You have the, you know, a half track here with some infantry. Uh, Honey Stewart in the front and uh, backing him up. Um, so yeah, a bit of the uh, tanks and regular infantry in that one. Uh, and over here, you've got a couple of roads leading into one over right uh, at this one. Uh, you've got, oh, here you have an uh, Humber, I think is how you pronounce it, uh, led by a steward. It, it, this first phase, basically if you don't know um, Steel Division, you go in three phases. And the first phase is basically your scouts and your recon and that sort of thing. And so basically your lighter things. So that's why you're going to have uh, the stewards with their, wait a minute, actually, is that a steward though at the front? Here, hold on. Oh, it's a Ram too, actually. Sorry, this is a different sort of one. So this is more of an armored uh, division, I guess, or an armored unit. Uh, and it looks like that's the Canadians right in there. So they've got a different sort of a, uh, they're being led by a different sort of vehicle. Actually, does it give us really many stats on that? Not a lot, but uh, basically I think it's going to be a little bit heavier than a, a Stuart, perhaps. Uh, then you've got a bunch of infantry in there, but uh, also a Ningo backing them up. Um, and over here you you can see, with uh, actually with this, this means that it's going to be a Piet. Uh, so a couple of piots, a machine gun, and some infantry. So that's going to be all your infantry there with no armor. This is, has some of the armor and the infantry. And over way on the extreme side, you're going to have universal carrier and a jeep. It's actually a lot of things sort of mixed up, but mostly it seems to be your lighter kind of scout vehicles because, of course, you also have the staghound here and uh, some AA as well. So they're going to have to the oh a couple of AA so and some artillery. So the planes are going to have to stay out of this area. Um, the German planes are going to have to stay out of this area while they uh, set up their artillery to pound on them. But really, the biggest problem is going to be if the Germans have uh, tanks on this side. So let's look at what the Germans have. Uh, facing that unit that is just a lot of infantry and stuff, you do have actually some panzers in there, or at least a panzer, and some uh, a couple of half-tracks, uh, some SPW, which is an armored car. So it looks like armored cars and uh, basically just armor in general, like uh, half-track uh, armored car and light armor <coughs> so far against them. Uh, and then, of course, you have this huge group right in here. So that's that's going to be facing up against 
what is this? Uh, the two of the well, I guess you have all three of these groups. When you look at the way the roads are structured, it's probably going to be these three going up against here. So the Germans just basically have this one huge group, but it's against three smaller uh, allied ones. But let's see what they have here. So at the front here, you've got uh, what was that? Beth Panzer 355. So it's probably one of their oh, lighter ones. Like I said, the camera work on this is difficult. It's not as easy as Total War, which is what I usually do. But uh, they, the animations on this are really good. And look at that. The more modeling and everything is really good. There's uh, what they're leading with. And I'm not too familiar with that tank, but it is uh, a lighter one. Like I say, this is the first phase. And looks like they're bringing in some ar armored infantry. Uh, I mean, half-track infantry, you know. Uh, some of their leaders, and then, yeah, it's all, you know, armored in one way or other. It's light armor, but um, half-tracks have armor on it, so it's going to be harder for the infantry to take them on. You do have some of these anti-tank uh, uh, half-tracks and uh, armored vehicles. Oh, and you have, it looks like, a uh, missile launcher here. So uh, you're going to have some of the artillery on that side. So yeah, basically you can see they've got a lot of armor and half tracks and all that sort of thing in here. What is this one? That looks like a Panzer IV already at the start. You usually do not see uh, regular medium armor coming in at the beginning of the game, but yet he, there it is sitting right in front of us, and it looks like there's going to be another one over here. So they're going to have a lot to contend with. All the uh, allies have against them are... Uh, well, they do have the, some of the anti-tanks, but mostly uh, the hunting stewards. Then over here, oh, wait, where is this? All right, over here, there's where they have the light. They put all the concentration on their other side, and over here they really just don't have a lot. You've got the armored car, although, once again, you have a Panzer IV C, so they're going to have a heavy thing right along there, and not that much, you know, some of the infantry to sort of support it. And then over here, further to their right or left, is where they have a lot more. Actually, it almost seems like there's more of them. Uh, they're led by a scout, uh, then anti-tank. This is more of the infantry here, because you have all of these trucks with infantry in them. And then you, you have uh, these, uh, what is that called? Not artillery, but the um, mortars in the back. And, hello, oh, it looks like right here you can see the symbol. That means that that is going to be anti-air, I believe. So they're going to be able to set up that so that the uh, allies aren't able to bring in a lot of their air power, which they're more powerful at this time, uh, this period. Uh, all right, looks like a lot of uh, scouts or you know light infantry over here on this side. They have their uh, motorcycle scouts sort of in the back for some reason, which is a little odd. Uh, but they don't really need much because of course their main force is over there. Um, and over here you have some more infantry with some anti tank So clearly this is going to be a defensive force coming down this road. Uh, and then on their far right, oh, almost their far right, uh, you've got a little bit, oh, a Stug. Well, so that's more of the uh, regular armor. So they are coming with some of their uh, best foot, feet first. They might walk over the allies here with, you know, the allies not being completely prepared. But they've got, uh, you know, some uh, infantry trucks to bring forward some of these. It's KFC-70. I believe that's infantry inside of them. Kubel wagons for their commanders. Yeah, a lot of regular infantry uh, there backed up, or I mean to, to back up their one bigger tank. I guess that's the main thing is they don't have multiple tanks. And then they have the anti-tank right over there. And finally, last but not least, on their far right or uh, far left, you have, once again, some, you know, a lot of infantry, although when they're cool wagons like that... Oh, no, no, that's the trucks. Okay. So, yeah, more infantry on this side uh, with a scout and a little bit of anti-tank. So, with all that infantry on that side, let's see how they match against one another on that far left, as we said. That's a lot of German, just basic infantry against... A little bit of uh, of light armor on uh, the uh, Allies' left. Uh, now, the Allies have their strongest form right here in this, in this sort of crossroads here, and that's up against the one tank, the, the loads of uh, infantry, and a little bit of that uh, those mortars in the back. However, they also have this lighter uh, thing here that could uh, join them. I mean, it's all based on where the roads are. Uh, where you end up at the beginning of the battle is really road dependent because you want to get your things as quick up as quickly as possible and you don't want them going cross country. So 
they'll go up, this unit will probably go up here, and then it'll be up to these guys as to whether or not they want to join over here with that larger group, or over here. My guess is over here, because this this area is a little bit undermanned. I mean, they have that one bit of armor, but it's a lot of just infantry, and this gives them the extra uh, anti-tanks for any of that sort of thing. Whereas this group is pretty good on its own. I mean, they got the mortars, they got the anti-air, uh, so they will most likely be going up against this group, which is one of the smaller allied groups. Uh, although they have a couple of uh, uh, of uh, Stuarts. Um, actually, they have a few Stuarts. This is a mostly Stuarts, but it's a sm or mostly uh, armor, but it's, but it's a smaller group. Uh, they will be up against this group, which uh, does you know. It, actually, they might need the smaller group uh, on the German side. They might need the smaller group to help over here as well. But it'll be interesting to see. It'll be this group going against this group and this group going against this group so this this uh, middle group of the germans will you know really it'll be interesting to see who they reinforce okay enough of that one over here you've got this smaller german force that was one panzer with a little bit of infantry up against a, a moderate sized uh, allied one and once again a couple of uh stewards. it really seems like what the allies have is more of quantity than uh, quantity of Stuarts, while well, the Germans are in qual quality of like a little bit heavier armor. Now over here, it really looks like these three uh, allied groups are going to be together, and that is a whole mixture of things, anti-air, artillery, uh, all that sort of thing, and then you've got some armor in there, uh, some anti-tanks and some machine guns, so they really just sort of have a full mixture over here. Over on the German side, though, this is where you have just a lot of armor, and some of it's uh, medium, like the Panzer IV C, uh, so it really is going to go f more for the Germans because they really have more of what they need. But the Allies here are really more combined arms. So it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. We're going to have this on very high speed at first to see them all get together, and then we'll go on sort of a more normal speed, and we'll just check in on the various groups. Okay, everyone ready? Let us go. All right, and as they're meeting up, you can see that right in the center is where the Allies got going a little bit faster and stronger uh, with their largest group and the group that was right next to them. In fact, it looks like that group that was right next to them is getting up onto that hill. Yes, they are taking... This is a sort of King of the Hill kind of battle where the Allies have a hill area. They have gotten up here, and they're taking a chance, even though the, the uh, motorcycle is there with its machine guns, they are rushing up to that hill and getting position, uh, getting themselves into whatever position that they are going to be in there while the uh, Germans are trying to get them and disrupt them uh, as they get set up, but they're not succeeding. Okay, over here further to the left, you have the Allies are slowly moving into place on their far left while trying to maybe hold them in place there where they have a whole line of... Well, actually, here is just one. The Dingo is trying to take on, uh, it looks like something to fire a bit stronger, like an anti-tank weapon of some sort, while meanwhile, the infantry is, all right, they, they, I was going to say those trucks are taking risks by moving up there, but they're, the infantry is now getting out of their trucks, and the dingo is down, so uh, the infantry is now having to set up where they are, and that firefight is going to get started now. On the far left, they really seem to have just sort of stalled there, and uh, a little further up, they, it seems like they're getting there. And a tank gun ready, and basically get themselves ready for whatever comes down. But the Germans have stalled, have stalled right where they are. They are not going to push there. It looks like on the hill as well, they're getting themselves set up, not going any further. Maybe this machine, they, oh, it's uh, where they destroy the dingo, they're going a little further. In fact, you can see that there's a gap here. Now, the, remember, the players do not see uh, where... Um, where their enemies are. They don't see uh, where their forces are. So the Germans don't necessarily know that there's a big gap here, but the, the Allies have a very large gap that the Germans could exploit, could go through, could go around, but they probably don't know that it's there, and so uh, they're getting themselves stalled. Their infantry is slowly moving forward into those trees, and if they find that out, they will probably rush forward. Now, the Allies have placed themselves into those trees and are holding off the Germans in this particular area. The Germans seem to be trying to push forward through that area when they should be exploiting somewhere else. Uh, the Allies have a perfectly set up uh, machine gun kind of set, uh, set up here to take on any kind of infantry. In fact, that's a jeep 
but the Jeep with the 50 cal in the back is just going to mow down anybody who goes across that field. So, in fact, they, it looks like they blew something up. However, the Germans now have placed their mortars, and so they can start taking out those machine gun nests, and that really will uh, clear up that that middle area. It'll be interesting to see how... Oh, it looks like they're either getting friendly fire or getting hit by something from the Allies. Anyway, all right, moving on further down the line here, you can see that, uh, well, the tanks have stalled uh, here as well. They've kind of gotten to a certain point, and uh, they're probably just establishing the lines. They saw where the Allies were here. Both sides probably saw each other and are saying, hey, we'll just fire at each other from here, see what kind of gaps we can get, and wait for the second line. The second the second wave is more of the medium tanks and that sort of thing, and the last wave is, uh, the third wave is the last one where you send whatever there is to exploit. So, anyway, it's interesting. Uh, actually, it looks like they're pretty much relying on the medium tanks, which are the heaviest things on the board at the moment. They are having fights with the Shermans, on the Shermans, with the uh, Stuarts, which is an interesting fight because the Stuarts should usually win. However, it might be because the you can see right now there are three Stuarts on the board or on the screen at the moment, and uh, it might be. I'm surprised to see some of those um, Panzer IV shells bouncing off of them, but it is long range. Um, but it's uh, it's probably quantity going uh, taking its toll right now and kind of scaring the Germans into believing that they just cannot go through there. Plus, okay, th here we go. This is one of their light tanks. This is more uh, competition against the, the Stuarts, and they, neither side wants to really risk too much since they, they really just don't have that many. Uh, the infantry seems to be shifting a little bit to the left where something is going on here. You see a lot of pin down here. The, uh, it, well, it's okay, so the Germans have placed, uh, uh, place some of their uh, tanks and oh long-range shooting what kind of weapon is that that they are using that they I guess is it this is it from the staghound because that just seems to be uh, that would seem to be a pretty hefty weapon to be able to take out an armored vehicle from that range oh and some shots are coming out at the staghound this is just an uh, oh and that just took out one of the German ve vehicles this is kind of a long-range uh, vessel it's kind of like they're saying to the uh, infantry. Okay, kids, stay back. The uh, the adults are fighting, and they're just lobbing uh, shots at each other. The uh, movement has stopped while they do that, and they got some infantry in into range to fire at the other infantry. Way off on this other side, uh, it looks like they uh, once uh, once again have sort of stalled and are saying who can get the best, and they're uh, sparing one of their staghounds to fire over here. In fact, that looks like it's the AA gun that since there is no enemy AA, they're being able to be used against the infantry way over here. So it's, even though it's really more this group against this group, they're sparing one of the guys to fire against this group. And that's going to give a huge disadvantage to this German group over here. All right, and it looks like some rocket... Oh, is this some artillery fire that's coming down over here? Where are they going to go? Oh, so there, you know, it's interesting because... I expected it to be, you know, just this group versus... Oh, yeah, there we go. This is our artillery. I expect it to be group against group, but there, uh, a lot of them are saying, all right, we'll spare a little bit to uh, send some stuff over here. I know they're going after the rocket. I was really hoping to see some stuff from this rocket, but it seems that it's mostly just backing up to uh, stay away from that, um, the artillery fire that's coming in on it. All right, so let's, let's go back to checking over here. Uh, it looks like the Germans have set up some of their anti-tank uh, to support the uh, tank moving up here. That's sort of an irony of terms there, but anyway. Uh, they seem to be moving up on this hill. The, the hill itself seems to be well guarded on both sides, and they have uh, one of the tanks just uh, over here checking in on uh, what's happening there. In fact, let's hide the HUD, take a look at some of the angles here. You know, some of these things, unfortunately, uh, they can be at such a long distance that unless we are looking from above, we just aren't going to see very much. Oh, but we saw that, though. That was one of the tanks going down. Not sure what it is. That was such a severe explosion. It's hard to even see what it once was. Oh, no, that is that wasn't a tank. That was a half-track. If, if I had a dime for every time I heard that. And, man, look at that machine gun fire coming down on something over here. They see some of this German infantry moving here. You know, they the German infantry, they're really trying to push through on this hill, and what they really should have done was go through this gap. Let's see how that gap is doing. 
that's over here. It looks like they might be exploiting it. Yes, they're finally exploiting it, but by that time, the infant, uh, the Allies have brought some infantry there. It is pinned down, but it is being pinned down by a lot of Germans there. Look at that. Two infantry units and a, uh, uh, a what do you call it, a motorcycle with a machine gun on it. That is just going to hold them down while the uh, Germans move in on them. So they, you know, they might actually be able to push through there. Looks like the uh, Allies have brought forward machine gun. However, it is pinned down as well. They're going to need to stop that, or the Germans just might be able to exploit that. We might see this exploitation take place. This would be the big thing. Oh, but that machine, machine gun is now opening up on them. Let's hide the HUD and take a look at how well this is going. Uh, it's hard to see there. Now fire is going back and forth. This is going to be a very meaningful one, because if the if the Germans can break through this, they will be able to get through them. That is the definition of Blitzkrieg. I cannot find the uh, American machine gunner. This is one of the reasons why, unfortunately, in this game, you kind of need the HUD. In, uh, in f a lot of the ancient battles and uh, anything leading up to Napoleonics and Civil War, you can uh, take the HUD off and really see everything because they're big, long lines. But, of course, at this period and any time past this, they are specifically trying to remain camouflaged, which means they're staying hidden from us. All right, over here, they are moving forward. The, uh, they have pinned down the German uh, infantry here. Uh, they really only have a little bit of armor to sort of hold them off. And so, oh, although they are so bunched up that now they're getting uh, pinned down. Or if one of them gets pinned down, they all get pinned down. So it seems like it has once again gone to the stalemate. It's, it's easy for all this to turn into stalemate because when you only have so much cover and you're dealing with infantry, then at a certain point they're just going to have to take uh, very specific routes. And you can see right here, all they had to do was take out, you know, shoot at one little area, and it just scared all of them away. But you do have the Stuart there to uh, stop from any breakthrough. So really, what we have is very much of a grind all along uh, the the front here, where they are just in a stalemate, except for here, which it represents something I really won't say. And the Allies have surrendered right at that point. The breakthrough is now open to them. The Germans can break through there, run through, and get in behind the Allies either by running behind them here on the hill uh, and meeting up with their own lines or coming over here and breaking them off uh, by going to the edge of the map. What are they going to do? It looks like they're running. They're taking cover. Uh, now, okay, it looks like they're going to start moving to the left, which is their right, and they're going to either meet up with their own or uh, get in behind the uh, the allies there. The uh, And the ally machine gun, the only thing within range is is pinned down and unable to go after them. So they're really going to have a, uh, they're going to be able to make a major break for it. Let's take a look at who these guys are. These are sort of the heroes of the Germans. However, they're not exploiting it quite as well as they probably could. You see that they're just kind of going, it looks like they're kind of going onto the flank of the Allies, which is not going to mean very much if, since that flank has uh, Stuart and, you know, um, Universal Carrier, all that. But... They really do. They, what they need is to get one of their vehicles, like maybe that tank or something like that, to run up and go around. They need Guderian to come in and tell them exactly what they need to do. Um, the Allies do have, actually, you can see that these anti-tank guns are faced that way. It's not tanks that would be coming at them, but they can be doing something. Oh, and it looks like the machine gun is opening up on them now. Or is that a different... Uh, nope, nope, the machine gun is opening up on them. The German uh, exploitation may not happen. They are running for it while machine gun fire is going after them. <clears throat> oh, got that one guy. And it looks like they've gotten far enough away that it's, they're not going to be able to do much more. However, <clears throat> as I stated, they're not really explaining. You you know, in order to exploit something like this, you really need the, do need the vehicles, and you can see how the roads would really aid them. They could run down here and now either take these roads to cut them off this way, or actually, you could take the roads down here to cut off their supplies, because if you cut off the roads down here, then the reinforcements are not able to come on, uh, couldn't come onto the board. If they went around here, then they'd cut off, uh, actually, if they took the road and went along here, then they'd uh, cut off this group, but if they took the road here, they would cut off them. Um, or they could, actually, the best choice would be come down here, to, uh, cut them off, and then come down here and cut off reinforcements. Um, <clears throat> it's harder to do with infantry, so maybe they're just realizing they're never going to make that so they're just going to bring them over to uh, fight uh, over there. By the way, um, oh yeah, and this this thing here just keeps bothering me. It looks so much like um, uh, like a Florida. Oh, here we go. 
and more of that machine gun fire. Maybe are they going to get a lot of bullets are, are bouncing off the ground. Ah, uh, this is long. Oh, they got the commander, however. But the Germans usually had special tactics, so, or they, that's special tactics so that everybody knew the plan, so losing the commander wasn't such a big deal. Um, now, by the way, uh, just so... Every, oh, and now they're using their mortars to come in. They've been bombarding them, and now they've put in smoke. So now their infantry is going to be able to run in. But their infantry, it's too late. The infantry has, is backing up. Well, there might be smoke for them to escape because they probably got themselves into trouble here. But that, that breakthrough could happen. I mean, even though Amer the uh, Allies have really been doing a good job of holding them off, you can see they've taken some losses there. Oh, well, no, I guess these are the force. But they're trying to break. They, they, the Allies kind of have two areas here. They have this area and they have this area on the hill. Um, and so if the Germans went after the small area, they might actually take it. Uh, meanwhile, that machine gun continues to rattle down on the uh, people who broke through. Um... By the way, just a quick note for everybody. You're going to see yeah, this phase one is is going uh, is ending. Phase B will be in two minutes twenty seconds, <clears throat> and in this particular one, a lot of times you continuously get reinforcement points, and you can bring reinforcements in throughout any part of any phase. In this particular one, though, we uh, gave no uh, the reinforcement points do not go up. It's just you have X number of points for the entire game. So typically what you want to do is spend one-third of your points during phase A, another third of your points during phase B, and then another third of your points during phase C. You could spend them all on the first phase, but then you don't get access to the troops that aren't even uh, available until phases uh, B and C. Because basically it gives you access to, uh, to light units in phase A, medium units in phase B, and then like you know heavy units or at least units to sweep everything up in phase, phase C. All right, so yeah, this uh, Florida has now grown, um, but the unit is still uh, units are still kind of uh, held there. So Germans aren't really going to explore that uh, exploit that. So let's keep on going. The, the the Allies have held this part of the hill, but the uh, the Germans actually uh, still retain their own. The, uh, they're scaring the Allies from going forward, and they have their mortars set up, so they could be and should be bombarding them. There is a huge gap here. The Allies could be exploiting, but it, it looks like that they're just going to go ahead and. Uh, defend. The Germans are slowly creeping up and they're going to try to break through here again. With only two infantry units, that is going to be quite difficult. Now over here, you have some of these units that really should be over at the exploitation zone, uh, such as the that tank, which just took a hit, and wow, they are really exchanging fire here. That is rough. Here, let's hide the HUD and just see how this... Oh, that, that German tank just disappears. That nah, was a good hit, but yeah, he's he's basically behind the trees, and it's just this is just a back and forth kind of thing. The infantry is like, all right, this is between two titans, we're gonna get out of there. Oh, you saw that shot bounce off of there, and yeah, it looks like that uh, the honey the Stuart is starting to turn around, saying, hey, maybe I want to get out of there, and of course the German one is falling back. They do have an anti tank gun. Looks like they're probably gonna try to get that Stuart to follow them so they can destroy it. But he's instead just going to stay disciplined and fire after the infantry to uh, try to take them out from a long distance. Okay, right along here, you have a big firefight with everybody. The Germans seem to try to exploit. Could not, and all the fire is coming out on there. Uh, over here, it looks like the Germans did actually make it a little bit further. They made it to that uh, windmill. Uh, and yeah, it's just kind of going back and forth. And, oh, some air powers come on. I wonder, it, it looks, well, you do have, some of the allies have some anti air here, so. But it looks like it's the uh, aircraft, the 109 is, is just kind of guarding the skies, making sure that the allies don't come in with anything of theirs. All right, so let's speed this up a little bit. This is regular speed. We've been on 50 uh, speed for a while. Actually, really, the, oh, the Germans do have another exploitation mark. This is on the... Hill looks like they moved forward, but they got taken down by uh, the Allies. Uh, they, that Stuart, that same Stuart that we saw uh, taking on the yeah, and going once again against head to head against the uh, Panzer IV. That <coughs> that is actually rather incredible. Panzer IV. Whoa! And the Stuart takes out the uh, the Panzer IV. That is really incredible. That uh, that Honey Stuart des deserves a medal. 
or for someone to say that this is just not fair. Uh, because that, oh, he would get a medal, but now he is dead. Or his, that crew, the, the heroic crew got destroyed. They pressed their luck. Went against the, uh, the uh, anti-tank gun, and, which was just waiting for them, and got taken out. Well, that's a pity. They could have been uh, used later on. Well, anyway, the scouts are going to now move up there. Maybe uh, try to hold that gap. Yeah, there, there's not much holding that there. The Germans, once again, could uh, uh, exploit that gap, but there's nothing to do it with. They, 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 all they have an AT, ATS... All right, <laughs> I almost said ATSD. Anti-tank gun. Uh, and, of course, the Allies have all that infantry there, so they're not going to be able to exploit that. Uh, I mean, if you've ever tried to exploit a gap with an, uh, with an anti-tank gun, first of all, uh, what's wrong with you? Uh, secondly, the, yeah, that would be quite difficult. I mean, just look at that. They're trying to just scoot a little ways. They're they're going to be better used uh, going over here to take on some kind of tank. Let's see what what they're looking at here. Uh, hmm, there's going to be something down there. Oh, well, we'll see. All right, see where the you know the allies really haven't had a now. There's something that's happened here. Somebody just surrendered. Is that a? Looks like it's a, a German uh, armored vehicle of some sort. Um, now the, the Allies are sort of breaking through, but you have... Oh, I was going to say, you have those ar that German armor there to stop them, but not anymore. Those Honey Stewarts are fearless. So they've just broken through there, and, you know, having the armor, they might be able to continue to exploit that. They really haven't had much opportunity to break through places, but now they really have. Now, we are in Phase B, you notice, that it, it, that came along. So it looks like the Allies spent their uh, Phase B points to bring in some stag hounds to block this uh, exploitation. The Germans were finally breaking through there, and it looks like that machine gun was taken out. So they were starting to exploit it, but you get the stag hounds coming in now, so it looks like they're going to try to go up and flank that hill and try to take that out. Uh, meanwhile, over here, it just has remained as a uh, stalemate, and the Allies are now breaking through and going after those um, anti-tank guns and uh, dealing with the uh, tanks, uh, or the tanks and infantry there. If they, I mean, it's not much that that they have to go through. Once they do that, it really looks like the Germans did not bring much during Phase B. They, they, it might be that they spent all of their points during Phase A. That, you know, you remember how I said the uh, they had some unusual, unusually powerful uh, weapons during Phase A. They might have just spent all of their points on those. Uh, just to have it at the at the front, and then just spent their wad, and they got destroyed by pan by uh, Stewarts, which is very unusual. Um, but now you see that they have the infantry that's trying to exploit at last, but it's too late. Staghounds are there to stop them, and that is, I mean, infantry versus staghounds. That is, you know, that that infantry they've done so well, they really shouldn't have pressed it like. But I guess maybe what they're trying to do is creep up through through the um, cover. So the staghound doesn't see them and get close enough. Because actually, that is one thing is in this game in particular, if your infantry gets close to armored vehicles, uh, you're in trouble. And it looks like the armored vehicle knows that. The staghound knows. That. Oh, in fact, that's the only staghound. The other one probably got destroyed for that same for the very reason I'm talking about. If they can manage to get close enough and do what they probably did to the other staghound, then once again they're opened up uh, to. Uh, and I mean, if they close these areas off. They could keep the Allies from getting uh, reinforcements from the third and final uh, stage, and they, the Germans might have a chance. Uh, it just doesn't seem like they have much of a chance because their reinforcements seem to be very, very weak. But we'll see in uh, Phase C. Now, you can see that they're moving up here. I'm going to speed this up just a little bit because I'm just curious. I know other things are happening in other parts of the battlefield, but this is just this is one of those suspenseful moments that uh, they're, they're creeping up. And the stag hound sees them and knocks out a few of them. Oh, the guy tries to get back up and knocks them out. Points needed to... Oh, but the... Yeah, the Actually, the... Let's see. Oh, I'm not quite sure what that was all about. All right, so now the Allies do have a mosquito now. They do have some uh, air power that's going in to uh, knock things around. The Germans, uh, it was their, uh, uh, I keep wanting to say ATSD, their anti-tank gun, guns over here are all that is guarding their right flank. The, uh, the Allies are slowly creeping forward, making certain that they 
keep cover as they do, but if once they realize there's nothing in front of them, they're just going to rush right through. This tank, of course, needs to be a bit cautious because that is an anti-tank gun. It can take it out, but if it uh, if he takes care of that, then he can go a long ways. Now, this one over here is starting to get a little bit forward, but I believe this weapon could possibly... Oh, it's a never... never oh, never warfare. No, that can't do anything to it. And in fact, they're now going to take those two things out. And that steward... These stewards really have done so much more than I would expect from them. And now that, that flank is just completely open. There is just nothing. Those anti-tank guns are gone. That entire area is completely open. Up on the hill, all you have left is this, uh, the, uh, this LG-40, which is uh, basically a powerful uh, machine gun of sorts that can, you know, get through some armor. Um, and it would be heavy against that staghound, so uh, the allies are wisely keeping that back and using it for uh, anti-air to, to preserve their uh, defense there. And the sniper has gotten into place the Allied Sniper has gotten into place. It is taking them out one by one. They're going to try to get that uh, that meat piece of machinery out of there. And the Sniper is just not going to let them, or he's going to try not to let them. He or she, there were some great uh, female snipers. Although I don't think in the uh, American Army, which I believe this is. Anyway... Oh, these guys, they should have... Uh, they're just running in circles now. They're just so panicking that all they know to do is run... Oh, and they are gone. The bullet went through both of them. And there you go. The uh, the Axis now have nothing on this side. All they need to do is move their uh, their stewards, which are, uh, are very fast, perfect for this job, uh, around here. They are, like I say, they're just perfect to uh, to do that because they're, they're usually not as good at fighting, but they're better at speed. And using that speed, they can cut off the German uh, reinforcement points so that when C comes along, when phase C comes along in just under three minutes, they will not be able to get any reinforcements if they can even do that. Now right here, they don't really even have much, although they do have machine gun and uh, the um, LG-40, uh, which would, uh, both of them would uh, cut down uh, the allies as they come through. So they really need to have, the allies really need to have some artillery uh, or at least some orders to uh, to take those out to get on through. Um, but they don't really need to. They can just hold them in place while the uh, vehicles come racing around behind. Uh, that may be what happens. And you can, in fact, you can even see over here on this side that uh, the uh, because the Stuarts have started to do that as well. They've gotten in behind. But it looks like they're kind of going back and forth. They don't really know what they're doing. Uh, over here, you got containment basically going on. The Allies... Infantry does not need to move forward, but they are holding the Germans in place. Way over here, you do have uh, a, a remaining Wirbelwind, and they're basically serving for anti-air. They're not coming out. The Allies have this pocket of people. Oh, but they, they need to determine because the Germans still have a pocket here. So this group of Allies, are they going to be used to cut them off and finish them off, or are they going to go take more territory? I mean, they probably should take the this out because they can't leave them behind. The Germans being right here could cut off supplies uh, for phase C. This this area becomes less important after phase C because you've got all your reinforcements but you do want to make sure you can bring in reinforcements and at every uh, point possible. So Germans are in this little area. It's going to see if they can manage to cut themsel get themselves out. Uh, it looks like they're taking cover in some of the buildings and the trees. And the uh, the allies are being pushed back, so the uh, Germans may be able to hold on to this little uh, island here. While meanwhile, they're doing their best to just be able to hold on any supply routes to bring people in. The allies are slowly making moves on that uh, on that point. They're not just going to wait for the vehicles. They tried to bomb them, uh, but they were not able to because that anti-air. Oh, it looks like they're going to give it another try. He's going to come around again. And he's not. All right, so the Allies basically have the Germans contained into this one area. They just have to make a, a move, and I think they've explored the, the table enough to know that that's all they need. So they really just have two areas of resistance. This one right here, which uh, seems to be folding. However, the German infantry is still there. This happens sometimes where all of a sudden their territory will just disappear even though they still have troops there, I do not understand why that happens. But the Germans basically occupy the town 
without controlling the town at this point. So they're going to have it difficult. Uh, the Allies are pulling back, but they don't really even need to be there fighting. So at this point, all the Germans just have this part. So let's move forward. Let's actually get to Phase C, and we are there. Oops, sorry. So we're, we're going to stay at... Uh, Speed one, and see if there's any reinforcements on the Allied side. I do not see uh, any over there. I do not see any of the Allies. I do not see any of the Axis. I do not see them. All right. So Panzer, man, that you know that that looks bigger than I thought they were. The uh, uh, that a huge anti-tank gun. That's the uh, yeah. Well, Pack forty. Yeah, Pack 43. Yeah, I didn't think the Pack 43s were that big. Although they do a lot of damage, so that would actually make sense that they're this big. Looks like they're not quite sure where they want to put it. I mean, it's infantry. It's against them. Oh, and somehow they managed to get rid of. Ah, I'm sorry, I was further away from there. I mean, you can see. Oh, and the sniper just got killed. But that ends that. Uh, it did end with an American death, but or a, an Allied death, but. They uh, they did manage to get through in the end. I apologize. I was further away from the uh, where they broke through. That was really the most important part. I think was uh, to end it was where they broke through that machine gun and that LG forty or whatever. Um, I I believe it was from the uh, air power because you saw all those craters there. So probably the air power managed to break through without being interfered with enough to uh, to cancel them out. And the Allies got through. But anyway, so uh, ends with their uh, the Allied victory. You can see the different things there. Uh, this is their history. What they did. Here's the kills. And the losses. And the experience. Of course, this isn't a campaign, so they don't really have experience at the moment, but... Uh, yeah, or maybe my account will get some any or something like that. But anyway, well, that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this. Be sure to subscribe, and if you feel that there are some choices that should have been made different, uh, put them in the comments below, and we'll argue and fight all of them like real warriors. All right, thanks for watching, and happy gaming, everybody.